Welcome to the webinar covering eDocuments add-on for continuous document capture. My name is Gert Cedar Winter and I am the product manager of the eDocuments uh, module from, from Continuous Software. Our main focus today is the user experience with eDocuments starting from the Document Capture Role Center. Before we begin, let's have a look at the agenda of the day. First of all, I want to show you how to demonstrate e-documents using the Continue Demo Portal. I will give a complete walkthrough of the four supplied test documents, all the way from the import of the files through the processing and registration, following the document across the approval workflow. And finally, in the demonstration walkthrough, I will show you the traceability of the approved document from the posted invoice and back to the received EHF invoice. There are a few more handles in e-documents to help minimize the daily working routines during the registration and I'll give a couple of examples of these. We have just released version 1.5 of e-documents and we are already developing on the next version 1.06 and I will give you a sneak peek of a few of the improvements to come. First of all, um, starting off the demo environment, you probably already know this, you can go to the Continue web page, logging into the Papa Zone, and you can, you can uh, reserve your own virtual machine. And if you select a document capture uh, demo portal, e-documents will always be present on the server. We have the role center here from the demo portal, uh, where I hit the import files, uh, and then um, it imports all files across all document categories here. And I hit the edit journal to go to the document journal from eDocuments, looking very similar to document capture. We divided this screen into three sections, like in document capture, document journal, and from the top we have an overview of all imported files. We do have a filter to, to get back to the registered files later on for archiving. This overall view gives a, gives a brief presentation of the documents that we imported. Below this, we have the yellow log, um, like the remark section from document capture. This will display what needs to be done for, for the selected line to be registered. The reason it's called error log in e-documents uh, is due to the fact that uh, the lines we have down here will, will always need some sort of attention before it can be registered. So it's actual errors preventing us from to register the actual document. With overall errors, and we can have some some line numbers referring to the to the document that we'll look on later on. On the right hand side, we have a visual presentation of the EHF document using a Norwegian style sheet. This can be modified if you have any other style sheets than the one we we support we, we supply with the uh, the product. So let's try to look at these four documents that has been imported. The invoice coming from Continuous Software is very is a, is having an error code very which is very common when you start using the module. During import of the files, the first thing that happens is we look at the uh, the sender code, the VAT number, and looks if we have any customer part sorry not customer vendor partner cards as it as the templates are called in e documents that has already been configured to hold this VAT number. If that is not the case, we will do a sweep of the entire vendor list of in NAV and look if any vendor has this the same VAT number already configured. If we find a match, we will con we will create the vendor partner card or template if you want automatically based on e-document settings, and then we will not see this error. If we don't find this VAT number anywhere, we need we will have to creates this customer, sorry, vendor partner card manually and let's do that with the continue invoice. Continue vendor partner. You'll notice that we already have two created vendor partners here. 
That is the result of the sweep through the vendor list where we had match in the ET number. So now I'll select the door. Now enter the VAT number of continuous output. The other VAT number enters automatically. It was taken from the VAT number of the vendor card. So it is now possible to receive from two VAT numbers and connect them to the same vendor. With this, the card is already ready to be used. That was very few information based on the settings of e-documents and one of them is that we want to match against existing purchase orders in our in the purchase module. I'll go back to the journal and I'll reload the document after I created my template. Now it shows us two different errors. First is a vendor name match. It says that uh, continuous software AES does not match the one on our vendor. We go to document and start processing the errors. This is a preview of the purchase invoice that we're about to create. So still the visual presentation on the right hand side and line presentation and header information. I have a function to accept the built name. This will be stored in e-documents, so the next time I receive an invoice from Continuous Software, and even though I'm trying to match with River Photosyn, e-documents now knows that we have accepted this name difference and it will not complain with an error line from now on. The second error was an invalid purchase order number two. It's because the River Photosyn does not have this purchase order. So even though my settings is that I always want to match against existing purchase orders from vendor 10,000, I will now override this with this document. So for, for this purpose only, this document only, I will match with an ex I will not match with an order, I will just create the purchase invoice. And with this, our error log lines now becomes zero. And we have a mark in the OK section, meaning that this document is ready to be registered. As we start using e-documents, more and more documents can be allocated automatically and be registered immediately. So for this, we have a function called register all, which gives you an option to fast forward and pay attention to the documents that need your attention. Now, two documents to go. Both coming for the same for coming from the same vendor, and actually both two documents trying to update the same purchase order. So the error in this case is pretty much the same as before, um, an unknown purchase order. But this time we want to actually find the purchase order to match against. So the same section, I will do a lookup looking at the open purchase orders from. Vendor 61,000. There you go. One. All right. Once I select this purchase order number, it will do a pre-validation of the document again, and it will start looking if if these vid item vendor names match anything on our existing purchase order, and try to to identify which lines we want to update. And our error of lines is now zero. The other one is a line error, so the purchase order number was, was correct, but it did not know which account in our uh, item item numbers is to assign it with. When when the, the vendor sends us uh, his own item numbers, there's no guarantee that we are using the same item numbers in our in AV. If not, we need to help e-documents to, to, to allocate it uh, correctly. This can be done in, in more ways. Uh, we have the, um, the item cross-reference table where we can have the same vendor item numbers typed. If the cro item cross-reference table of standard NME is filled with the, uh, with, the, with the link of this vendor name and this vendor item number, it will automatically allocate to the, 
the item account that we have selected there. Or we can type it in manually, we can deselect it here from our entire item catalog and create a new uh, conversion for, for this vendor item number. When we do this, it will automatically fill out the item cross reference table for further reference. Or there is a third option, we can go directly to the purchase order that we're trying to match against and we can select the lines from this purchase order. In this case we could see that it was the writing paper. Let's try to invoice us, so we'll select that. And with this we now have a conversion for this item by vendor item number. And when we validate it, these two orders are also ready to be registered. If I re register them singly, it will show me the purchase invoice that was created. And we can send it for approval directly. This is something that we can deselect in the e-documents settings that we do not want it to open the, the new created purchase invoice. And I'll get back to that later. So now all four documents are left e-documents and we are now going into standard document capture approval flow. Except that I had two documents that said for approval, yes. Let's do that. So let's go to the web portal and see that the, the documents coming in through e-documents will be delivered to the approval web portal exactly as if they had come from document capture. Now we're in the same same flow, uh, regardless which where, where it came from the purchase invoice. And logging on with Roger Vengo, we now have four documents for approval. Pay attention to this document. It has an attachment. You uh, may not have noticed this in e-documents, but we had a embedded file in the in the Continue software invoice. On this demo board, because the Continue demo board, we cannot uh, show the TIFF files, so we not, will not click on any here, but it could have been PDF files or any other files, and we can look at it, look at it in the report as well. When the document is coming through e-document documents, uh, it will extract the embedded files and place them in the drag and drop file box from document capture. And this file reference will follow through the, the approval and um, in the end it will also be attached to the to the purchased to the posted purchase invoice. And you'll see we have the um, the styling of the ESF file still on the web portal as well instead of a PDF file. And I'll do a quick approval of these four documents. I see this. I have some large amounts on three of the orders, so we need secondary approval. And now all four documents are ready and we can post them. with document capture, uh, we only create receipt purchase receipt lines to update the purchase order with. This means that we have not closed the purchase order yet. But as you may know, or you will know now, is that with document capture we have a, a batch job that will clean up your, your orders that are fully invoiced and now the purchase orders are cleaned up so you don't have the fully delivered and invoiced purchase orders anymore now they are but they're gone. And yes, I promised to show you how to track the posted invoices and see how we got get back to e-documents. Let's use this example again. Here we have the invoice coming from Continuous Software and using the Navigate page it will give us reference to two files. We have the document capture file, the TIFF file again attached, which can be opened clean this link, and the e-documents link going directly back to the document card where we processed the document initially. 
And that gives you the full traceability back, even though it's posted. I, I did mention that I wanted to to show you some, some additional features on the uh, cross reference. So I want to go back to the document setup and show you how to deselect the update of the uh, the cross reference table to be updated. By default, this has been set. This is the, this is the setup that enables uh, our population of the item cross reference lines. But you may think that uh, what if we are not allocating item accounts to our received purchase, purchase invoices? It is also possible. But obviously, we can't, right? we can't update the cross reference table with that these references, these conversions. So, on the single vendor partner cards, we do have an option that looks similar, maintain conversion codes, also selected by default and can also be deselected. When this is set, and if we allocate a vendor item number to, to a general ledger account, this will be stored in new documents and this will also be automatically, automatically or allocated um, the generator accounts from from the manual at allocation and on, and onwards. We do have more options. Speaking of general ledger accounts, we can also teach e documents to to set a GL account automatically on uh, on any document. If we select a purchase account on the vendor partner card here, we have to have two selections, two choices to, to make, one of two options to select uh, to get it working. We can either set account 1080 on all lines that we receive, giving you the option to reallocate during, during your approval, or we can do a single line document um, adding up the total of the invoice and setting it to TL account 1080. This can be set here, or it can be set as a general setup when we configure it here. Pass it the same, right here, the same selections. This means that when eDocuments automatically creates new vendor partner cards, it will automatically set up these values as well. Please take a note that if you already have received vendor cards, like we now have three, they will, it will not update these two. These will have to be done manually. So set the default values here, and you can make it individual on the vendor partner cards. Objects. It is possible with e-documents to register directly into a general journal if you want to. But if you do that, uh, please be aware that you might skip the approval flow set up in document capture. This pretty much concludes what I want to show you in the demo portal for now. So, eDocuments 105 is brand new, um, and we have updated the demo portal like I just, like just showed you, and this was this happened a few weeks ago. Many of the improvements in the document capture were were minor uh, visual minor visual adjustments. Um, to align the, the user experience with the document capture usage. But aside from that, we have also done, been working on the um, the eDocuments e engine. Um, in version 1.4 of eDocuments, we had problems uh, with a few functions not working entirely server-side, like document capture. With this fixed in version 1.5, and also the removal of several message boxes coming from your documents before, this now enables the possibility to schedule the import files that I pressed initially in the demo. And you can schedule this in the in Map Application Server if you want to. The result of the work with the server-side import also gave us an improvement of the time consumed on import of files of approximately 40%. However, we are still not satisfied with the speed of the import. So after the release of version 1.4, we have seen problems with large files, uh, with large embedded files. With this improved, uh, we, uh, we will have a huge performance upgrade again, and uh, we will release this uh, as version 
1.6. And this uh, should be an easy upgrade on top of 1.5, so, so it shouldn't be a big task to, to get this improvement once it's ready. So the main headline of version 1.6 is performance, performance, performance. We want to make it uh, nice and, and slick. Second, we had a uh, quite quite hot fix for the Norwegian market. We we noticed some uh, some problems by, with importing the the kit references. We have a fix for this, and um, I expect to to release uh, the the, the go to two objects that we need update to for this fix uh, separately on the uh, continuum web portal within a few days. But it will also be included in version 1.6. Finally, we are planning to add uh, direct communication uh, using SFTP. We we are having and we are using an, a new add-on add-in for uh, for e-documents that can be configured to to establish an SFTP communication with theoretically any operator uh, giving a SFTP communication. But we will also generate a list of the um, of the known suppliers that we know. And as some of you may have noticed in the Norwegian demo, we are still missing the Norwegian captions in um, in e-documents. But work is in progress, and we expect this late this year to have to have finished. So, if you well, once the captions are being released, um, we might need your input back if uh, there's something that you that you think we should translate differently. That pretty much concludes the planned agenda of this webinar. So, let's to take a quick recap. We did a complete demo of e-documents in the doc continuous document capture portal. We looked at some a few, a few additional features um, that could be enabled by to improve automatic handling handling of the ESF files, and finally we went some through some some feature improvements that were coming with the e-documents 1.6 and what has been released in 1.5.